my beautiful Sagittarian friends and welcome to your horoscope for February of 2021 where this month is absolutely brilliant for you Sag in terms of getting some projects off the ground, getting your fingers back into maybe something that was going on before and getting it moving forward. I absolutely love the idea, communication, and just the planetary and cosmic buzz that's available for you this month in terms of taking on some ventures and pushing them forward, sharing your ideas. Maybe even this is a month where the venture you're going back to is some kind of study or something like that. So I absolutely love it and I look forward to breaking that down for you. Now, the eat and greets are continuing on, and I've made it even easier for you to access who's coming, when, what we're going to talk about, put it in your calendar, all of that good stuff. You can go to stormygrace.com and not only see all of the beautiful friends that are coming in February, but you can see when they're coming by checking out the calendar right there on the homepage. As well, I have put in that calendar all of the astro events that are coming up through 2021 so you can check them out be be a part of those as well and i also hope that you are taking advantage of your winter souls disappointments everything will be in the description box down below okay all right my beautiful sagittarian friends let's get in here and let's see what's going on this month oh my goodness before we do that Please make sure you like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and if you are already subscribed, please make sure you hit that notification bell so that as soon as we are doing an event, a live, an eat and greet, an impromptu, whatever, you're getting the notification that we are on and popping right away. All right, Sag, let's take a look. So right as we come into this month, one of the things that we want to keep in mind is that Mercury is still retrograde. Mercury acts as your relationship planet in your chart in one area because your opposite energy, the seventh house in the general, is ruled by Gemini. So as the mercurial energy is retrograde here, one of the things I considered for the month is that, you know, relationships could be feeling like they're moving a little bit slowly or maybe even a little bit backwards, like you're reviewing them in some way. But with Mercury retrograde, the other thing we just want to consider in general and keep in mind is that the first half of the month is not the strongest for making the new decisions, right? And actually putting them into action. Maybe what you're doing is writing a lot of things down. You've got information coming to you. You're considering it. Put it in the faith box to see if that's the right thing for you. So just keep that in mind. Now your strongest days to make new commitments, new decisions, sign those contracts is going to be between the 21st and the 20th. 27th of this month. So jot that down so that you can make all those big decisions after Mercury comes out of retrograde, but definitely reevaluate and consider as much as you need to, okay? All right, as we start out this month on the 1st, Venus is coming into the energy of Aquarius. Now, this is going to light up your third house space. The third house is thinking, teaching, communication. It's our learning capacity. It's our first mental house. But when we're talking about learning here, we're talking about learning at the elementary or beginner kind of level, okay? When we're talking about more advanced learning, we're talking about ninth house. But this is like that beginner level learning. You could also be teaching contracts, buying, selling houses, cars, all of those things that come with a sense of negotiation, those also land right here in the third house as well. Writing that book, writing that website, it's all here in the third house. So as Venus comes into Aquarius into this third house activation, one of the things I think of immediately is that Venus acts as a magnetizer. She brings a gentle, beautiful, magnetizing, harmonizing, harmonizing, harmonizing energy into the area that she comes to. So in Aquarius, this is a social situation. So one of the things I think of is, are you writing something, teaching something, sharing something at a social Aquarius level? And Venus is making this very attractive and magnetic to people. Are you feeling called towards a particular course or cause or supporting something like that at a very social long-term kind of level that energy could definitely be here now not only is venus moving into this area but she is joining a stellium of packed extraordinary energy in this third house for you i mean i just can't stress that enough this house is loaded for you this month please take advantage venus is going to be joining the sun Mercury, who is, yes, retrograde, but still in full power here. 
Jupiter and Saturn. So I'm telling you, the third house is lit. And even though Mercury is retrograde, he's nestled in here with the rest of the planets that are moving forward. And as we get to the end of the month, then all of the planets are moving forward. So see your ability this month to get something going, to get that venture off the table, to get that course, get enrolled in that course. It's absolutely here. Now, if you have a chart that is high fixed quality, I really want you to pay attention this month because you're lit up. You are given like an extra dose of comic f cosmic fleek, so make sure you take advantage of that, okay? We're going to action pack this house and bring it up a notch on the 11th by having a new moon in the energy of Aquarius. Now, this new moon's going to happen at 23 degrees of Aquarius, so jot that down, mark it out on your chart, okay? At the new moon, we're planting our seeds of intention to begin something here, and it doesn't mean you have to begin something new. It's just that we're giving a fresh perspective, a fresh set of eyes, a fresh set of movement and energy to something in this area. Aquarian says it's social or part of an aspiration or desire or a cause that is important to you. Third house, communication, teaching, deals, contracts, study, things like that will be lit up for you. Now on the 12th, we're going to welcome in the Chinese New Year. And although I don't practice Chinese astrology, I always love the symbolism behind the animal that represents the year. And this year is the year of the ox. And I just think how gorgeous for us. Fierce determination, hard work, really being able to shoulder responsibility and commitment and building something here. It's not about rebuilding, it's building. So Sag, I ask you, and please let me know in the comment section down below, what are you building this year? What are you building? Your ruling sign is in the energy of Aquarius, which is quite expansive. It's that skyscraper energy. You've come to the top of everything you know, the biggest horizon Sag has seen, and now you can see just a little bit more. So what are you ready to put in place and build for yourself? On the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day. Even if you don't, I'm sending you Valentine's love, okay? But on the 14th, we've got Mercury, who's still retrograde in conjunction with Jupiter. I love this day. I feel like it's a nice highlight because as Jupiter and Mercury come together, your ability to um, negotiate, do business deals, have conversation. It's like sweet conversation is available to you. And because Mercury is retrograde, again, I think you're going back to a project, to an ideal, to um, an aspiration that you had before. And now you're talking about it because Jupiter is ready to expand that thing. He's showing you the wisdom of learning and reevaluating what this past situation was so that you can bring it and launch it forward. And it's probably at a social level or it's around a cause, maybe even a friendship or something that is important to you, okay? On the 17th, we walk into Saturn and Uranus's first square of the year. Now, Saturn's over here in the energy of Aquarius, so lighting up your third house space. And Uranus is here in the energy of Taurus, lighting up your sixth house space. So as these two square together, the square is our indicator of action. You're going to be put under tension, it's going to be uncomfortable, and you need to make a decision. Now, you can, under a square, have an explosion and overreact and overdo it and, and be highly impulsive and not, you, it's almost like you act before you think, right? But you can also so under this energy, not resist the change. The square is coming to unroot you just a little bit to say you've been too fixed in this area, in this way of doing something. Maybe you've got an old habit or an outdated belief system or something that you're doing that's not working anymore. And the square is like, we've got to do it different. Wonk, let's do this. Let's make a change to this. So what you can do is be very methodical. Fixed energy is quite methodical, right? What is your step-by-step -step approach to moving these two areas forward? Between the third house and the sixth house, one of the things that I, I continue to think of for you is this idea of, of what you're thinking is translating to your body, right? Like that body, mind, spirit connection. What's happening in your head is 
absolutely happening to your body. So what are you thinking about? What are you consuming? What are you putting into your daily routine that may be impacting that? In your daily routine, are you trying to study? Are you trying to grow something? Are you trying to learn something? But your daily routine is surrounded in ideals or behaviors that are just outdated. Be flexible, be adaptable with this square because it's actually coming. What? Ever comes from this energy is just trying to shift you remember the universe is actually working towards your greatest good so get on board with the energy and if you're not sure what to do to move forward this is an Aquarian year ask for help research look up a different way to do something okay on the 18th, we have the sun move into the energy of Pisces, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality to the fourth house zone. So now at this point in the month, we're going to begin to make the shift to need to start to care for home, for the foundations a little bit more. The psychological foundation is like re, um, reactivating this area so you can make sure it's strong, steady, and healthy, but you're motivated to do it. You know, in the, in the energy of the sun, we are motivated to take care of this particular area. You could also begin hearing different things about housing or about people in your family. They could start to take a spotlight at this particular point in the month. On the 20th, we're going to see Mercury come out of retrograde at 11 degrees of Aquarius in that third house. So now you are set, you are ready to make those new deals, sign those new contracts, launch that venture, um, and let your thought process, know that your thought process is wrapped in a fair amount of clarity. Now Mercury does need a couple days to just get his life together before he's ready to just dole out the blessings. So if you can wait a couple days, that's great. But really between the 20th and the 27th, you've got a strong amount of energy to be moving things forward, okay? On the 25th, Venus is going to jump into Pisces and join that sun in the fourth house. So this really brings a great harmony to the home area, to the psychological foundation, to um, what makes you feel secure. Maybe even just a really beautiful energy where you're like, I want to beautify my home which could be the body, could be your insides, could be just your physical space where you're like, I just want to make this what I think it should be for my 2021 year, right? Like you've just had a birthday, you're inside your solar year. It's a beautiful time for you to really make sure that your space um, is in alignment with your vibe, right? Let your vibe out into your house. On the 27th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Virgo, lighting up that 10th house space, tip top of the chart for you. The ruling planet of your 10th house is also out of retrograde at this point, so that's absolutely beautiful. But the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So while this hasn't been an entirely um, powerful career month in terms of the energy really activating here, you've had enough happen in the fourth house that we could definitely see some shifts or adjustments needing to be made to that 10th house for sure. Now, as we close out this year, we're going to close on the 28th under a grand earth trine. And I absolutely love that. Not just because I'm an earth sign, but I think it's really practical for all of us. So we've got the moon over here in Virgo. We've got Pluto and Capricorn and Mars in the energy of Taurus forming this beautiful trine. Now a trine is a pocket of energy and it's an opportunity of ease. There's an opportunity here, but you have to go to the opportunity. Okay. But under the energies of earth, they are grounded. They are practical. They are material. So if you make decisions in a grounded, practical way, you can really have a nice impact on your material reality, especially on the things that you're doing day to day. If you have not been at this point in the year um, Sag supported or felt like you had the right kind of support or the right kind of information or the right kind of alignment with groupings, or you're ready to bring in a new alignment with groupings. Like I said, this is a month where you may find yourself really feeling passionate about supporting a cause or joining something quite digitally. This is a wonderful energy to let you know that you're making a steady practical decision that can have great long-term impact for you. So I think it's a very useful month. Be grateful that we got another one, right? And I hope that this forecast gives you the opportunity not to hear that everything's perfect and roses and all of that stuff, but to hear the energies as they're coming in so that you can make decisions how you'd like to pivot, how you'd like to align yourself to the opportunities that are available to you this month. All right, my beautiful friends, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Sag.